Hello and welcome everyone, I am Ducky O'Brien and today I'll be going over my fully automated soil to scrap conversion line. It's using storage sensors, you know, everyone in my comments and whenever I stream on YouTube, has, uh, not on YouTube, on Twitch has been telling me to make a storage sensor production line. So I did it. It's fully automated. It's pretty darn efficient. I'm proud of that. And let's get over it. Let's get over it. Let's go over it. Sorry. <laughs> what am I doing? All right. For starters, we have a soil canister as the input. Now, this is optional, but you can connect a storage sensor set to full or empty. Attach that to a button repeater. And attach that to the furnaces to turn them off when the canister is empty. So you don't have zinc over producing. That's probably not going to happen, but it's a fail safe. You can attach it to anything else you want to kind of trigger an off state based on the soil. Now it'll spin. Let's take this off real quick. Put a new canister in there. Now it will spin into quartz and then it'll output it here. This arm will grab it and load it onto this buffer platform. If you notice it has a storage sensor on top of it. Uh, it's set to full or empty. When this is filled, it will stop the loading arm and then these unloading arms will activate. And the reason why I have three is I needed to go in pairs of three right away. I have three printers and basically if one printer is active, it will only load one printer with one arm because if by the time it's done printing, the new quartz will come in and go into that printer. So it's very hard to spread out uh, the loads. Anyways, uh, you don't only need one arm here because uh, by the time this centrifuge is done, it will have finished loading the quartz. Now you can add two more arms if you want it to be faster, but the overall speed does not increase. All right, going here. I need to have, um, what you might call it. I need to have these three printers print equally. So I have this set where I have a delay repeater here set to max delay. All of them start to max. So I have a set so that it will activate this printer and then it will activate the next delay repeater. So this delay repeater activates one printer and then it activates the next delay repeater. When this is done, it will activate the last printer and then activate the first delay repeater. So basically it'll print evenly. This is something that you need because basically I am trying to divide the scrap in a 1 to 1 to 1 ratio uh, between these three printers. I need a third to go here. This is my permanent scrap storage, alright? This is where I store the scrap that I'm going to use for other things later. That's one third and then two thirds of it goes into here, which is going to be recycled to be used to make uh, sphalerite, which is going to be turned into zinc, and then that's going to be used to make these storage sensors. So it's not efficient in that I have to use scrap to make scrap, and it goes from 1.5 scrap per canister to 0.5 scrap per canister because of this. But the trade-off is, is that's fully automated the sensor is, uh, the storage sensor is the cheapest one to make in regards to soil and scrap. Not only that, when it prints, it prints unpackaged and then you can pick it up with an auto arm and then you can drop it off into the shredder. You have to drop it into the shredder. A couple of things to note here. Make sure when you place your auto arms that they're away from storage space. They can't even be remotely near, otherwise you'll have storage sensors, you know, up here. You don't want that. Anyways, when the scrap is done, it gets loaded into these buffer platforms. I have two of them. And same thing here, I have a storage sensor set to full or not full. And when it gets filled up, the loading arm is stopped and the unloading arm starts. And then it goes into the trade platform. And then when this is empty, it will trigger the trade platforms. It will get triggered when it's full, but by then the trade platform is in the air. Or there's no scrap on it, so it won't go. I have compound here as a filler, so it does not load the scrap onto here. Uh, this platform is a little too close, so it loaded the scrap here, but I'm going to keep it here so that it will never fill up any other slots. One other thing, when you are kind of building this for the first time, you have to make sure that you put an extra scrap on the trade platform. Because what happens is, let's say it's loading. Sphalerite requires four scrap for a full load. It's one to two. One scrap will give you two sphalerite. So when I'm unloading, right, 
So when it grabs the last scrap here, this arm will be in mid-air and then it'll activate as soon as it's empty, meaning that you're going to have only three pieces of scrap. So to prevent that from happening, you need to put an extra scrap here when this is emptied so that it'll have a scrap on the arm and the next time it does that, the same thing will happen. As you can see, it's a full four scrap. All right. Now when that comes down, it's going to be unloaded by these two arms here, grabbing Stellarite. The reason why I have storage here is that these arms are too slow. So by the time that you're unloading half of it, it'll be ready to produce more. So what happens is the storage, the trade platform will go up with four Stellarite on it and that will fall to the ground and the four scrap will be there. And you don't want it on the ground, but if you have a, a storage unit attached to the platform, the trade platform is attached to, it will just auto unload onto these. So you can speed it up by putting more arms, but again, it's not going to speed up the overall process because the trade platform is the bottleneck here. Anyways, these will unload into the smelting furnaces. The canister is empty, so I'm going to turn this on. Uh, and then it will get smelted and then output into here. This is loading into the silos. And then here I have three arms moving it because I need it to move in groups of three. When this is, you can use one if you want, it really doesn't matter. And when this is loaded, the same thing here, a storage sensor set to full or empty. It will shut off these arms and activate these. These have to be in groups of three. And they'll all note the zinc here. And then the process repeats. Uh, so that's pretty much it. A couple of things to note here. You do need to prime your production line with zinc. You can't make zinc from nothing. You either have to have scrap ready or have zinc on itself. Uh, I didn't do the math, so as you can see, there's an access of quartz. Uh, I got to figure out how much scrap I need to put on here to make sure that's a one-to-one -one ratio. Uh, it will be... So basically, if you look, I have a lot of load-bearing, uh, all that stuff in here so that it's kind of efficient and that the input will sort of match the output. Uh, the bottleneck here is I need four smelters. The amount of time it takes to make eight quartz is uh, a lot faster, a little bit faster than the time it takes to make eight zinc. And the bottleneck here are, are the smelting furnaces. They take the longest. I think I put two because uh, it takes roughly 50 seconds for eight. So if I have two of them, that's roughly 25 seconds for eight. And then if I have four smelting furnaces, that's roughly around, I think, 40 seconds. It's going to be a minute. And it takes around a minute to produce eight uh, quartz from this. I think it's like 28 seconds for four or something like that. I'm not entirely sure. I'll do the numbers later, but here we have it. A fully functional, fully automated soil to scrap conversion line. Uh, you don't have to do anything other than dig soil and put it in and also have a little bit of zinc ready to prime this printing table. All right, that's going to be it. Hope you guys enjoyed what you saw here. If you have any questions, comments, things you'd like to see or for me to cover, please feel free to leave a comment down below. If you want me to build something, just let me know. I'll definitely give it a go. But yeah, this is uh, pretty efficient. The only way I can make it more efficient is if I could figure out a way to easily put four smelters there. But it's a god dang pain, so... <laughs> uh, I don't want to use auto arms to move them off. That introduces more time. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so much for the support on YouTube. I appreciate that as well. Anyways, before I keep rambling... Uh, I'm sleep deprived, so I need to go to sleep. I uh, hope you guys are staying safe and sane out there. And catch you guys next time.